Welcome back to the second part of videos about irrational equations. And let's look at the following task, task six. And the task six is square root of three X plus four equals two X. Now we know a little bit more considering what the tasks that we did so far. First thing is we should start with the condition. If you look at just the root, there is one condition. If you look at the greater picture, there is two conditions. If you just look at the things inside of the root, 3x plus 4 has to be greater than 0. If you look at the greater picture, since the whole left side has to be greater or equal to 0, well, this means that also the x on the right side has to be greater or equal to 0. Meaning, we have and x is greater or equal to 0. Left side as it is, is going to lead us to the conclusion that f has to be greater or equal to minus 4 over 3, right side is already set, or right part. Number line is going to determine us or give us who is the actual, what is the actual, uh, actual condition. Minus 4 over 3, 0, okay, everything to the right, everything to the right, ta -ta 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 -ta. And we end up with the main condition being x is greater or equal to 0. This is the main condition concerning that. So you can write it down like this, or as in the previous video, x is element from 0 to plus infinity. So if you get that, everything is okay. Now let's go into the solving part. And here is where things are going to get interesting and where we will have to apply certain methods that we learned previous year. And... <clears throat> There is a reason why we did learn them, because they are going to appear now. So, first step is, can we square it? Yes, we can, because we have root alone on the left side in this here case. Everything else is on the other side. So, if I square, 3x plus 4 is going to be equal to x squared. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't get a linear equation. We got something more complicated. We got x squared, meaning this is going to lead us into the square <clears throat> or quadratic equations. And yeah, you didn't learn how to solve them yet the way we are going to learn in upcoming lessons. What we do know, though, is certain method to check what's going on. Now, first thing first is we would have to have everything on one side of this equation. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract everything with 3x and 4. You could have also subtracted with x squared, why not? But I'm going to leave it as simple as possible because I know the trick, basically. But you don't have to follow the, 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 this step. You can, you, you, you can subtract with x squared if you want. So this is going to lead us to 0 is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now, this here subtraction, so to say, this here difference is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Now, last year we had issues with the, with, we, we, in algebra we determined where that the subtraction, the addition is not as strong of a bond between parts as it would be if we had multiplication between them. So if we can, we are going to factorize and we can. Unfortunately, this is neither the extraction this is uh, or the or the formula because uh, nothing fits, but it could be grouping. And it is going to be grouping. If you take a look at minus four as minus four times one, and minus four plus one is equal to minus three, then this is the grouping part minus four plus one. So, Let's group them up. Let's see the factorization. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus x, separated, minus 4. First part, we can extract the x, so x minus 4. In the second one, there is nothing to extract, but I'm going to write it in the bracket to make sure that we know or we can now extract the bracket itself. So 0 is equal to x times, or sorry, x plus 1, x plus 1 of the x minus 4, so x times x minus 4 plus 1 times x minus 4, so this x plus 1 
times x minus 4, or x minus 4 times x plus 1. Now we got to the factorization. Why is it important and what it gives us now? Well, this gives us the opportunity to determine the x. Why? Because two numbers multiplied give 0 as a product. So product of two numbers is 0. Well, then we know something about the factors. At least one of them is 0, meaning x plus 1 is equal to 0, or, why is it or? They don't have to be both equal to 0, at least one of them has to be 0, or x minus 4 is equal to 0. Subtracting with 1, sub adding 4, so x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to 4. Now, we got two possible solutions, x1, x2. Now, what is going to be the actual solution? They can both be, none of them can be, and one of them can be. Let's see. Let's start with minus 1. Oh, minus 1 doesn't fit the condition. It's a negative value. And let's go back to the start, and you're going to see why. If I use minus 1 instead of the x, left side is going to be square root of 1. So this is a square root of 1. So th minus 3 plus 4 is 1. But the right side is going to be minus 1. Oh, this doesn't fit. This doesn't fit the bill. So minus 1 is not the solution because of the condition. 4, on the other hand, seems fine. And it is fine. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. And x is 4. Here we go. This fits. So we got one solution. Another example of what, it, what there can happen. Okay, now this doesn't mean that every time that we're going to solve it, that you're going to have just one solution or no solutions or two solutions. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. I'm just showing you here what's going on and what can, what you can stumble upon while working with irrational equations. And last task. This is going to be the ending of the part two video. We are going to continue on in the following lesson, next uh, time we meet. And this is going to be the task or the equation that looks like the following. Square root of 6x plus 13 is equal to x plus 3. Now, if I compare task 6 with task 7 or equation in task 6 with equation in task 7, the difference is that now we have something extra with the things outside of the root, so to say. But let's start with the condition. Conditions. First of them is that 6x plus 13 has to be greater or equal to 0, which leads us to that x has to be greater or equal to minus 13 over 6. And there is two conditions. Everything to the right side, because the left side is greater or equal to 0. The left side is greater or equal to 0, meaning that the right side also has to be greater or equal to 0. Which leads us to the conclusion that x has to be greater or equal to minus 3. Okay. So, number line. Now, which number, what number is going to be left and what number is going to be right? Minus 3. This is going to minus 13 over 6. This is minus 2 point something. So, it's greater than minus 3. So, minus 13 over 6 is to the left. Minus, uh, to the right. Minus 3 is to the left. Everything greater. Everything greater. Da, 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 da. Brackets. And the main guy is going to be everything that is greater or equal to minus 13 over 6, meaning this is the main condition. Okay, so if solution or solutions meet this condition, everything is going to work out fine, and we have the solution for this equation, or this equation has a solution. Okay, root is alone. We can square immediately, since the root is alone on one side. So, Left side is going to be 6x plus 13. Right side, and this is now an important step, everything is squared. Everything with the brackets. Meaning on the right side, we are working with square binomial or square of a sum. 
So let's apply the formula on the right side. Copy paste the left side. Right side is going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay. Now let's see what we're going to do next. We see that both on the left and right side there is 6x. So let's sub subtract with 6x. What is going to help can happen that they, they are going to cancel each other out basically. And let's subtract with 9 so that x squared is alone. So if I subtract with 9, this is going to be equal to 4 equals x squared. And now we go to something that we learned past year. And I'm going to use a different color for that. So to make sure what's going on, I want to determine what the x is. There are two ways you can determine. I can ask myself what number squared is going to give me four. And if I do, if I ask myself, then I'm going to come with the conclusion that x can be either plus or minus two. Or we can now use the root. We can root things. So this is going to lead us to square root of 4 is equal to square root of x squared. Important thing to notice. Okay, square root of 4 is 2. We should be able to determine that positive value. Everything is fine. Now, back in the last video, we said the definition of the root is if you have square root of x squared, then it's equal to x. But if you have square root of x squared, this is going to be absolute value of the x. Don't forget about that. Meaning if I now apply the square root of x squared, this is going to be absolute value. What is it going to lead us to? It is going to lead us to x is equal to plus minus 2. So there are actually two solution pos solu possible solutions. x is either equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 2. We got two of them. Now let's see if any of them works for the condition or with the condition. 2 is definitely greater than minus 13 over 6 and minus 2 is greater than minus 13 over 6 because minus 13 over 6 is minus 2 point something. So it's lesser, this number is lesser than minus 2, meaning the minus 2 is to the right from minus 13 over 6. There you go. We got two solutions. Both of them are fine everything works out. So this is the ending of the part two. If you have any questions, you know where to ask and hopefully I'll see you in school soon. Bye-bye.